In the following videos, we're going to discuss data acquisition, commonly called DAC. First, we'll look at the DAC Assistant Express VI. The DAC Assistant provides a user interface to assist with DAC configuration. Through this interface, all required data acquisition parameters can be conveniently set up using a wizard. Start with a blank VI and place the DAC Assistant on the block diagram. It can be found in the Measurement I.O. subpalette under NI DACMX or in the Quick Drop menu. Once we place our block diagram, the DAC Assistant wizard is initialized. Once the initialization is complete, we will see a wizard-based set of screens which will allow us to specify all of the relevant information for our DAC task. The first screen is to select whether we want to acquire signals or generate signals. Under the Acquire Signals tree, we can select Analog, Counter, Digital, or TEDS inputs. Similarly, under the Generate Signals tree, we can select Analog, Counter, and Digital outputs. Each of these choices will lead to a different set of choices downstream, although most of the key features between them are the same. For now, we will proceed with creating an analog input. Now that we have chosen the type of input, we are presented with a list of different types of transducers. In other words, we can choose what type of reading we want to perform. Some of our choices include voltage, temperature, resistance, frequency, etc. In this case, let's choose a voltage input. Once we have chosen the type of input, we have a choice of which channels we wish to use. Right now we only have a list of physical channels, although we could have a list of virtual channels as well. For now, we will choose one of the physical channels. Depending on which device we select, we will have a different number of channels available. We have the ability to choose one or more channels by using the control or shift keys. We will choose two channels. Now we have finished creating our task. The next screen is our task configuration. Here we have the ability to view and change our channels. We see here that we have two channels created because we selected two channels and they have been named voltage 0 and voltage 1. We can choose to rename the channel by right clicking on it and choosing rename. For now though, we will leave them as is. If we expand the window, we can view how our channel names are mapped to the device. In addition, we have the ability to set up the settings which include the input range, units, terminal configuration, and scaling. Beneath the channel settings, we have time settings. Here we can change the acquisition mode, the number of samples to read, and the rate at which we read them. Depending on the acquisition mode, the samples to read and rate controls will be disabled. One sample on demand will collect one sample as required. This is used for slow acquisitions with very little change. One sample hardware timed will collect data depending on the hardware sample rate which we can configure. N samples allows us to configure the number of samples to read and the rate. Finally, continuous samples will read samples continuously and the samples to read control is our buffer size. We will choose continuous samples. The next section to discuss is the triggering tab. For many applications, we want data acquisition to start under a software controlled manner. In other words, as soon as our software calls our data acquisition task, the task starts immediately and starts returning data. Alternatively, it is possible to specify triggers of different types. As we see here, there are four options, each of which may or may not be available depending on the device you have chosen. In each case, it allows us to pause the acquisition until the trigger has been seen. The next tab is the Advanced Timing Configuration tab. This again, depending on the device selected, allows us to change the behavior of the sample clock. For now though, let's leave this unchanged and press OK. The DAC Assistant now verifies the task and begins building the code necessary to run this data acquisition task. The message that has popped up is an important one. It says you have configured a task with a mode that typically requires you to place the DAC Assistant Express VI in a loop. This is because we have chosen continuous acquisition, which keeps collecting data until we ask it to stop. The message is asking us if we want to automatically create a loop. Yes, we do. Now we have a data acquisition task to collect data and a button to stop it. We have everything we need except a graph to display the data on. Let's right click on the data output of the DAC Assistant and choose Create Graph Indicator. Now if we run our program, we see our data collected and placed on the graph. When we stop our program, the acquisition stops as well. Before we finish, it is important to note that if we double click on our Express VI, we can edit the settings we configured previously. Also, 
We can convert it to a regular function and view the block diagram by right-clicking on it and selecting Open Front Panel. It is important to note that once the ExpressVI has been converted, we can now edit the settings using the wizard. If we open the block diagram of this new VI, we can see that there are a number of DACMX sub-VIs included in this code. You can open the context help window and explore some of these DACMX functions. For further information, have a look at the detailed help for these DAC functions. In this lesson, we learned how to use the DAC Assistant to create and configure a DAC task in LabVIEW.